Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming over to the sessions area for the Nordex technical breakout session. And I would just like to introduce two speakers today who will be giving the presentations. We have Federico Bianchi, the um, sales manager for South America, and his colleague Patricio Flores, who's a sales engineer for Latin America. I would like to encourage you to put your questions directly in the chat, and once the presentations. Patrice, if you like, we can move forward with the next slide. So we will start by making an introduction of what Nordix is all about. We have a presence in around 40 countries worldwide, 28.8 gas at a worldwide level, multinational company that is born and grows in 2015, acquiring in Axion at Wind Powering. Uh, we are specialized in European, uh, South America markets, and we also have a strong presence in Asia, uh, in Latin America region. As you will see in Colombia, we have 20 megas in operation for Wipirache Wind Power, but we are under construction of 200 MGs, and 149, that is part of the family that Patricio will mention in a few moments. Next slide, please. This slide wants to show you what is the global supply chain and the plans that we have distributed all around the world. In America, we have Mexico, we have pails, blades and uh, poles, and then we have turbines, and we have all the main components that are being produced there. In Argentina, we have uh, poles, we have three operations um, simultaneous, and then we have an assembly for hub. In Chile, we have um, concrete uh, poles and manufacturing, and then we is hope to have one in Argentina. And then uh, in America, we have a world supply that is located in Spain, China, and India. in India, a new country where we try to do a supply for large components in the last years. And this supply chains enable us to adapt to the different needs of our customers. Normally, it is quite relevant at the moment that you need to have credit for export and to have a good, you need to have a good coverage. Next. We will be highlighting the construction and maintenance. We have special teams on construction. Each of the projects is being analyzed accordingly. We establish the most competitive strategy for cranes. We work with a specialized staff when we enter a country we integrate teams with a specialized staff coming from Germany and Spain uh, jointly with uh, local staff we do all the supervision and we hand over the construction of the project in the different stages um, even if it's not mentioned in this slide, we have great experience on key on hand projects. Next. Regarding the maintenance and operation in Latin America, we have been present for over five years operating on the full on M O and M we are responsible for the farm for a great component in case it fails because of the crane and we are operating in four countries with or both technologies wind power acciona 
and the w, w platform and the Delta 4000, which is the German technology that has its origin in Nordics. At present, we have 13 wind farms operating. We have approach to country, regional and global, and we have not been penalized in the region since we started operations. Patricio, you have the floor so you can continue with the product development items. Well, thank you so much. Uh, greet everybody. Thank you for joining us today. We will be talking about our Delta 4000 platform and how we have the Pell develop these uh, products. It is headed to cover the largest amount of markets and sites as possible. Each site is different from one another according to the speed, to maximum wind speed, different levels of uh, land, different levels of cut, and well, what we do uh, with this uh, farm is to have sufficient decisions on the places where we will be uh, intervening. We have a less than 5 MGs. We have our model N133, 4.8 maximum of, of power, and then we have the 149 and up to 4.8 mg's of power that could be reduced to 0.5 according to the noise requirements, among others. That is a special characteristic that we have on this series. And then we have the N155 that once again is reaching 4.0 mg's. It is collecting some specifics, but the difference with the others is the pitch. It is hydraulic instead of motorized. Then we move to the 5X series, over 6 MGs, uh, maximum 5.9 actually. Those are reforced for the previous one. It is a machine 163 with Sides of an average speed a little bit lower, but nevertheless, not less energy. Uh, I will not enter into too much detail, but in the slide you can see on the screen the main features for each of the products. We'll go one by one according to the roto diameter. Then we have N149, 4X and 5X based on the 4.0, 4.5 and then we have the soft product that will be 149, 5X that have an electric system and taking that as a basis for one N163 in addition to those improvements in the electromechanical production. It increases the length of the blade and that is uh, for less uh, wind areas. 
Here we have a machine that has been designed to optimize the task of for maintenance or service operations. We can do re-evaluations on the nozzle according to the drive by the gearbox. Turbine is prepared to have an sustainable crane. In the past, it was done with cranes with high height capabilities. They had to reach that nozzle, and right now we are doing with a crane that is included on the same um, generator. You save a cost considerably. We have also taken advantage of all the experience that we have in order to do preventive maintenance. Many com of the components that integrate the nozzle and the reinforced hydraulic system monitoring to predict, predict to prevent monitors according to our large experience. Everything is aimed to improve maintenance, reducing costs on maintenance for all machines on platform. And this bringing benefit to the customer. According to flexible nominal power, mainly, it enables us on one side to see the power and in you increase the power, but if you reduce it, it has other benefits such as improve the structural resistance, improving the capability of uh, dealing with high turbulence areas and reduce the levels of noise that in Europe and much that is of concern in the Americas as well is being considered on the projects. You need to fit in each accordingly to the sites where you will be installing them. There are so many different types of sites and we try to optimize them as much as possible. A comment over here in order to complement the information. Can you have in a site of 10 seconds, you cannot be using an N149? Well, we see that it is quite robust and, and if turbulence allows it, we could have maximum power even with a wind speeds uh, quite high. This machine we have installed in 11 meters per second. Not necessarily we have to be uh, too low on nominal uh, power. I just wanted to make that comment to that you can really see the robustness of that platform. Thank you, thank you for that comment. I was telling you that it can reach a 5.9 MW. Uh, original it was 5.7, but it is a power that has nominal speed, almost identical. There's no change in hardware if we compare the previous model to this one. You can have additional power, which can mean improvements. And for large projects, you can be saving the number of machines, reducing to a minimum of one or two, according to the type of project, which can bring benefit to the project and to the CO. OE, that's one of the indexes that it is very important for the energy industry at large. 
Then moving forward with N163, same concept of flexible nominal capacity to have more power that's being reduced to increase the feasibility of 20 or 30 years of life and reduce noise levels, always aiming to improve that is one of the KPIs that is being considered. Well, the difference of between this one and the previous one is the blade, as I already mentioned, and it is changed or adapted to the sprinter according to the modification. What is the similarities from 149 and 163? Well, NR74.5 share the same mold, and that was incentive for N163 because they were demanding that level, and it has been pointed out about the length. The blades are one part only, and that is why we have an integrity. Moving forward to N155, it used components from the Delta IV, thousand components, uh, electric system, drivetrain, door, from uh, N149, and we use the nacelle from 5.x. You have the housing, main meaning housing, the cover that's in glass. What we modified here is the rotor diameter, a larger base, a new half connection. Uh, we have increased the cone angle to 5.0. And I mentioned previously, we are not using an electric pitch system. Now we have an a hydraulic pitch that is the concept that was used in the 3000 platform. Uh, an upscale of AW3000 design. And then we have the same philosophy in on the N155. Uh, we made exactly the same updates about the new gearbox, the upgraded power transmission system, and what are the components that are changed? Well, the pitch and some changes on the hub and specific requirements on site that could have a reinforced pitch. We have a question, Patricio. How are you working with climate change on the market? When we study a new project, we receive a set of information, climate information, on behalf of our customer, the one that we are using to validate on loads, and the turbine is mechanically viable to work in a specific site. That's how we uh, study a stream, wind speeds, temperatures, densities. There's a whole previous work carried out in order to install a machine in a site to guarantee that it will be working properly for the lifetime of that park. And Guajira project region, it is necessary to establish an extended refrigeration system in addition to that because of the temperature of the machine, because of high temperatures, it would not heat up. And well, all of that is previous to the park. And once that the turbine has been installed, 
Then, Patricio, maybe you can help me out, but it has a series of elements on the turbine that is going to be checking the wind spin. The turbine will have a cut that will be determined, and the turbine will be in a flag mode in order to prevent technical failures. Would you like to complement something more, Patricio? Yes, in terms of the planning stage, we need to consider that there should be a year of information of metering. And we will just need to check that this technology has been there for almost 35 or years and with one year's uh, measurement that will be enough or what we need to do for the coming years. We have a greater number of data and years and it is uh, becoming more precise and accurate. As I said and as I Federico mentioned, the temperature measurement for keeping these conditions that are needed for, for the mechanical performance as well as uh, to safeguard the integrity. So there should be some temperatures to be taken into account and that they are part of the operations. Uh, so we just need to perform that. Uh, and also we just need to consider turbulence and based on the cut on the, the breakage and will be part of the operation. So each of these uh, wind turbines have uh, some signaling for having uh, this uh, metering. So we have a database that would allow us to perform some monitoring of the equipment or the engines, as well as to have some planning for the short, medium and long term planning uh, for that uh, uh, wind turbine and the park. I don't know if that answers the question. I'm going to continue with this optimization project. Shall I do it or shall you continue? Well, just a very brief comment. We know that the, every time that we start with a project, we have this energy cost and the project is always in the first uh, column. We have the energy cost and we're trying to reduce. So what are the different main mechanisms, the new products, more uh, power, the, the rotor, and what are the different uh, adjustments to perform? We have another COE program that this is an internal program that is trying to reduce the cost of this wind energy. They have a, it has a quite an aggressive targets that we are trying to meet. And thanks to that, the wind energy could be competitive and allow us to, uh, as a wind turbine manufacturers to keep going. Now, in terms of the, the, Last point, the column in the red box, there is a reduction for the energy cost that has been done and it's quite relevant. Working with this project, trying to optimize the layout and having the opportunity to, you have the civil works or the electric works, the human works, and also to optimize the width of the roads and the optimization of the engine is being done jointly. So it is quite relevant to work with it and working with, with this project, we can achieve some important and significant energy reduction costs. And this is one of the main objectives from our customers that if it's well worked or Man perform, you can determine the tender beats or achieving the probability levels. So this slice is trying to sum up this concept. Thank you, Federico. I'm going to continue then. In order to express the success of this platform, 
uh, we can see that the uh, gigabyte that Federico has mentioned, we have today 5.7 gigabytes that correspond to this. And that is for 2018, if I'm not wrong. And in a quick case, we have gotten a quite a significant result for the engines, including the one in Colombia. We have a we have closed uh, a deal with uh, with them in this country. That is quite reliable, quite efficient, and it is a great company. Finally, I would like to mention some technical particularities of the engine and in our technology in general. We always uh, submit the criteria designs in addition to the certification that we uh, need to, to show. We have for the Delta 4000 and with this type of technology, but in addition, we are having an ex uh, quite a comprehensive revision. So for those who are wondering not only about the design of the engines, but also how they operate, that is uh, with the purpose of providing this information and to show transparency as well as reliability in our products. In terms of the evaluation or assessment of the engine, as reference, we are using the ISE. And in terms of the design requirements for these wind energy generation systems, we have a steel tower structural verification that is with a 61401. And for these concrete towers, we are also based on the 61401 as a base. In electrical or power perspective, here we have another slide where we have a more information about this structural assessment. And this also related with Colombia. And in Mexico, Ecuador, Peru, and Chile, where I live, we have this a seismic assessment. The risk of having this uh, seismic movements or earthquakes, and that also should be assessed. This is a risk that is there, and we have in all countries, but the, if there are some others with a greater risk, and we need to assess based on the local area. We have the NSR norm for the regulation number 10 for Colombia particularly, and this is for the different types of calculations. We use this as a, a modal precision calculation for this type of design. Then we try to redefine the calculation with an elastic uh, aerial impact, as it is being stated on the slide, for for different other features. So we, then it could be in a different uh, idling, normal or nominal situation for different type of events. Our seismic certification scope is to get this tower and anchor cage certified. If it's a concrete uh, tower, well, we just need to change that in case there is an event that is going to work and this um, wind, wind uh, turbine will be resistant with no damage of any type so they can continue in operation after the seismic uh, event. I think that is that. and. In another aspect of the uh, power of electrical perspective, each country has their own grids. In the case of Colombia, we will have the crack from the 62 from um, 2019. 
and we have made this assessment and we just need to check the content of the different requirements that are being stated. What are we going to verify? Well, from one side that they are in compliance with all these requirements for this type of operation in terms of frequency, resistance, and from the, all these uh, tension lines. We are going to assess that according to the conditions of this wind turbine. We'll also perform another evaluation for, for the plant. We need to check what are from different aspects with the different solutions that could be provided, such as the correction, power correction systems, and if the, if the engine has this capacity for a reactive response, and, in, and we need to go side by side. We also perform some of the analysis in terms of the different agreements that would support the CREG agreement. In particular, we have the agreement uh, 1,223, 24, and 25 that are required for the verification of the proper function of it as well as with the control system. In addition to the PQ curve, all of this is assessed and is going to be delivered in the wind park development process so we can be sure that we're in compliance with all the different requirements not only with the verification or with the different uh, authorization for its operation this is uh, uh, more or less the presentation if i uh, may interrupt there are some other questions uh, Vamos a estar en, en eh, estrado o vamos a juntarnos a la siguiente sesión en breve. Muchas gracias, Patricio y Federico, and, and great to see how many questions are coming through. I, I would encourage all uh, unanswered questions, um, you know, to to please take them up with our presenters here. But um, we've uh, we now would like to bring everyone over to back to the stage for the next panel. So um, thank you very much once again to to Nordex, and I would encourage you to continue the conversation um, with any questions you may have you by a virtual expo or by the networking function. Um, Muchas gracias a los dos. And we'll see everyone on the stage section very shortly. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Muchas gracias.